everybody, this is Dave, aka Serial Killer. Uh, this isn't really a build update, it's uh, just a video I'm going to do. It's my first time using uh, Smooth On and uh, making a mold, and uh, just wanted to share and uh, show what I'm up to so far. Okay, here we go. Alright, this may look familiar to some of you. <clears throat> Where we are right now is there's one coat, the primary coat of dragon skin. After researching and researching, I decided to go the route of dragon skin. Uh, with a little help of uh, Mr. Brandon McLean. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, this is just the primary coat that's on right now, and its purpose is just to fill in all the small detail areas. I had to uh, add some putty. I don't know if you can see, there's a very thin white line where the visor meets the jaw piece. And going back there, it's hard to see, but uh, just wanted to make this baby airtight. I had contemplations of uh, taping over the visor just to keep it one solid piece, but I figure, you know, if you're going to make a copy, do it right. So I painstakingly siliconed all the inside of the visor with the two sections. You can see a little white haze in there. And uh, that's what that is. Okay, a little bit about the product. Uh, what I've come to learn so far. It's quite thick. Now, thankfully, I uh, purchased this silicone thinner, also by Smooth On. Uh, it thinned it out a bit, enough to brush it on. So that helped. Without that, it would have been uh, painstakingly slow, just because I don't want any air infiltration. Uh, what else have I noticed so far? Yeah, uh, Dragon Skin Fast 10 has basically an 8 minute pot life. No joke, 8 minute pot life. You've got to be like lightning fast. Uh, hindsight, maybe I would have gone with the medium, just the one right above the fast, just to give a bit more time. As, uh, I mean, this is a learning curve, I wasted a bit of silicone, not much. I only mixed uh, a couple ounces at a time. And it ended up taking me two batches to do this just because the stuff started to gel up. But uh, so far, uh, it looks pretty good. A few more coats to do. I just need to let this stuff uh, cure up enough. It takes about 45 minutes. And uh, you're not supposed to be able to, you can see when I touch, that it pulls up. It shouldn't do that. It's going to need probably another 10 minutes. I'm about 25, 30 minutes in. Yeah, about 30 minutes in to the needed or uh, requested 45 minutes. Uh, then I'll start the second coat. Uh, like I said, this isn't going to be a comprehensive cover. Um, when I go to do the next piece, when I go to do the chest, I'll have gathered some experience by then on the whole molding process. Uh, and I'll do a much more comprehensive cover on that. But for now, just wanted to share. And uh, that's about it for now. <laughs> uh, I'll update a little bit more, just show play by play. And uh, I'll post this up when I'm done. Okay. We're two coats in. And... Uh, one thickened coat for the undercuts, so it's just applied areas so here, here, and under the brim, which isn't really a coat. So it's one coat to uh, capture all the detail. Then uh, 45 minutes later, there was another coat just to build it up, which is what this thickness is here. Um, I don't know how thick it is just yet, but uh, we're less than halfway done building. Then, after 45 minutes, I did the undercut fill with uh, the dragon skin thickened with, uh, with Thyvex, just to bring it up a lot. It turns it into like a peanut butter consistency, and it's a workout trying to mix it. And, uh, yeah, this is where we are now. A few more hours, and uh, we should be done this process. And uh, we'll check back in after the next coat. Alright, coat one, done.
coat two, done. I just put on the thickening coat. Uh, it's been thickened with Thyvex just to fill in all around the base. Starting to dense it up. And also underneath the brim, I got rid of all the undercuts. What's left is uh, one more coat and uh, my keys are just setting right now inside an ice cube tray and uh, the keys are going to go around the perimeter of the center line front to back and uh, the only other place I'm going to be putting keys is on the cheeks right here one here and one on the other side the reason for that is uh, the shape of this helmet naturally has its own keys like if you look at the protrusions here you look at the back how it comes out like this that's a natural key it's going to help lock it into the into the mother mold and keep it from moving especially when you consider the brim and uh, the rebreathers they're all natural keys i have given this a lot of thought have done a lot of reading and uh, got advice from a couple great people uh brandon and uh, from Blackula, from Tony, uh, who've given me great advice and uh, who have awesome threads. And, uh, you know, without them, it would have been a lot more research than this. So, I'm gonna do the last couple coats, get the keys in, and uh, you know, we'll have a look at that when it's at that point. This has taken a lot longer than I thought it would have. <laughs> uh, I'll attribute it to being my first go. Uh, let me say, Tony, I feel your pain now. Here's where we are. The keys are all in. All the undercuts are done. I have one coat left to do. And it's all pre-portioned and waiting. This is just about set. Still a little ways to go. Needs about 20 more minutes. And uh, I took some advice from Brandon. I did not reinforce with cheesecloth. Uh, and what I did was I purposely left the uh, registration keys here and did not fill them in. They're on there solid. Uh, the reason for this is the dragon skin is very pliable, very pliable, and I'm going to be rolling this up. And the reason I didn't fill this in is because it'll make it easier when it's rolling up. It'll give it some space in between, so these will almost move like vertebrae and be able to roll up so you won't meet resistance here. They have a bit of finagling room. And I wasn't too concerned with too many keys because like I said before there are natural keys in this. Like the breather the rebreathers, I added a couple here just to be safe. But just the overall dimensions of the helmet allow for uh, it to self key like this back ridge here. I'm pretty confident it's going to be nice and steady when it's inside the mother mold. And, uh, yeah, I'm quite tired and I still have a bit of work to do. So, got to do one more coat, which will bring the overall thickness to just, uh, just under a quarter inch. And it should be between three sixteenths and a quarter, so I'm right on the money. Okay. So yeah, we'll pick back up, and uh, when's the last coat's on? All right. You can tell. I'm wearing different clothes. That means it's a different day. Sun's also out. That's a good indicator. Here's where we are now. All right. Uh, had to go out for more material. This would be pint kit of dragon skin number three. And I also picked up some pigment. Just because it's a lot easier to see what's going on 
if you use more than one color. The uh, reason I had to run out for more was uh, I forgot about this area here. The indentation at the front of the helmet, which would have caused a huge problem when casting. Doing the mother mold on the outside, not casting, sorry. <clears throat> so, what I've basically done with the blue is uh, smoothed everything out wherever there was, there was a bevel. And next is uh, one more Nugs coat. That will give me the thickness I need. And uh, we'll be done at that point. So, one more coat. And we're good to go. Okay. This is where we are now. We're pretty well done. I've just been uh, wiping off all the drips as they accumulate. But uh, I must say, uh, after working with this dragon skin for a while, it is quite the pleasure to work with. It, uh, it's thicker than Rebound, as I have worked with Rebound in the past. Uh, it starts thicker than Rebound, but I find that it coats somewhat better. Okay, scratch that. Now we're done. I had to do another coat. It just felt like the right thing to do. So, now we're actually done. This is what we're looking at. It's nice and blue. I cleaned up the drips as I went so they didn't really accumulate. And, uh, yeah. That's about it. She's ready for the mother. So, uh, no undercuts anywhere anymore. They're all sealed up. But uh, that's about it. I'm tired still even more. And uh, we're done. Yeah, we can just chalk it up to... I've had my fill. Uh, it's been a learning experience. Uh, molding my first helmet. Really anything more substantial than something fist size. Uh, it took a lot longer than I thought it would. I figured, you know, uh, take 10 minutes to apply a coat, 45 minutes to cure up so we can recoat. So really four or five coats and I'm done. Really you're looking at about five hours. There's more. I'm not going to say how much exactly it was because it's embarrassing. <laughs> But uh, I'm sure if some of you out there know uh, what I'm talking about. It's one of those things you can't really explain uh, until you do it. You have to do it to understand. But uh, just a recap. Um, yeah, this wasn't a tutorial. Wouldn't be nice to do a tutorial if it was my first time. Wouldn't be much of a tutorial. The, uh, but I, I, I can honestly say that what I've learned is incredible. It's uh, been a lot from just doing this one helmet. I've actually learned a lot. So, the next piece that gets molded will be the chest and back. That will be a tutorial. For now, I'm tired. I'm going to let this cure. And tomorrow I'm going to build a mother mold for it. Yeah, that's about it. I got nothing. Oh, good night. And we'll pick up again.